are you tired of getting outplayed? Constantly getting demolished? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly level up your Smash Ultimate skills. Whether you're looking for tier lists, character guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Esam, Zero, and MK Leo support Pro Guides. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to start improving right now. Imagine that you find a game, sport, or job that you really love. You have such a passion and ability for it that you train and train until you start seeing more and more results. You're continuously improving, eventually making a career out of your passion. It feels awesome. And then things start to change. The grind starts to feel like, well, a grind. Your passion starts to dissipate, and even though you aren't necessarily doing any worse, you feel like you're not improving. In fact, you're not even sure you want to improve anymore. You've hit a wall, or at least a plateau, and now you're walking along a dull, flat path towards a horizon that feels like it has no mystery or zest or anything. What was once a passion became a career, became a job, became a chore. This is the story of Armada, circa 2013 during his first retirement from Melee. In an announcement on Smashboards, Armada told the Melee community that he was retiring and wouldn't enter Melee singles after Apex 2013. Despite winning almost everything he entered in the last two years, Armada didn't feel the will to win and improve. I do not feel any motivation to become a better player, he wrote. I think it's time to stop playing. But this isn't just Armada's story. It's the story of anyone who's ever burnt out. Like depression, we often underestimate burnout because it's a catch-all term. We'll use it when we just need a weekend break after a long week of work. Or we'll use it when we haven't had a weekend break in three straight months and wouldn't mind if the global economy collapsed and plunged us into a state of post-apocalyptic tribal warfare. Even when it's a small feeling, you've got to watch out for burnout because it can bring the greatest players low. That's why we're going to give you a guide on how to counter burnout. This is a matchup you're probably going to face whether in Smash or in something else. Burnout is so common that a Gallup study found that about two-thirds of 7,500 employees they interviewed felt burnt out. If Armada's first retirement didn't make it clear why burnout is bad, just know that burned out employees were less healthy, less confident, burned out employees were 63% more likely to take a sick day, 2.6 more times likely to look for other work, and 23% more likely to go to the emergency room. Yikes. And all that applies to getting burnt out at Smash 2. Burnout won't necessarily destroy your skills at the game. However, it could easily destroy your love for the game and the competition. And losing the love of the game often leads to leaving it entirely. The first step to beating burnout is to understand it. Since burnout is so widely used, we often mistake it for other mental issues like depression. But the ways we fight depression aren't necessarily the same as the ways we fight burnout. Burnout focuses on one aspect of your life, like work, relationships, or smash. Depression extends to every or most parts of life. Burnout usually leads to fatigue, frustration, less effective work, and depersonalization. That kind of great feeling you get when you're going through the motions. You can feel all that from depression, but depression will often make you feel worthless, even if you have no reason to feel that way. Of course, burnout is a long-time doubles partner with other mental health issues like anxiety and depression. Mental health experts have found increased anxiety makes you more likely to burn out, and burning out makes depression more intense. All the more reason to deal with it. If you feel burnt out on something like Smash, it's probably due to overexertion. For most people, Smash is more a hobby or sport than a job. So that means Smash burnout often comes from overtraining and competing while underresting. Basically, training and playing a ton without taking time to rest and recover. In sports, burnout can be mental, physical, or both. In Melee in particular, you'll see a lot of pros take time off for hand pains. That's the body burning out. An overexerted wrist is a lot like Little Mac. If you want to compete with it, you're going to want to give it a lot more recovery than it has now. But the physical isn't all carpal tunnel. During periods of intense burnout, your brain actually changes. Your amygdala, the part that controls emotions like fear, expands. At the same time, your body makes more cortisol. That's a hormone that helps animals survive super intense, stressful survival scenarios. It's great in burst and in response to stress, but if cortisol levels don't lower, then it causes all kinds of problems ranging from irritability to muscle weakness. So your burnout could look purely mental, feeling fed up and bored with all things smash, or purely physical, hand pain so bad that you gotta take a month off, or a mix of both, feeling tired of playing smash and tired when playing smash. Most of the time, burnout is both. That means you've gotta take a mental and physical approach to beat burnout. 
You've probably guessed the most obvious way to beat burnout. That's right, it's by resting, recovering, and taking time off. Since Smash is a hobby for most of us, this isn't that hard to do. But if you've been a Puff main since Melee, you know that it's not really about the rest. It's about the rest setup. There are a lot of ways to take a break. If your hands hurt but you still love the game, you can spend time researching, talking about, and analyzing the game. The only thing you need to do is not play. Well, and go to the doctor. You know, you know, just check up with them. Taking a physical break usually means doing some physical therapy exercises, strength stretches, and maybe signing up for a yoga class. It doesn't mean pulling away from Smash mentally. If you're really burnt out, you may want to take a mental break. The Smash Fast could be the best option. In this case, you want to use your break time to pursue other interests outside of Smash. You can learn a traditional fighting game just to prove that, yes, we can do inputs. We can do that. We can do inputs too. You can also do things to specifically help mental health, like exercising. Regardless of if your break is mental or physical, the recovery period is a great time to decompress. Decompressing means putting your mind in a relaxed state and letting it review information. You could decompress through meditation or just through thinking, but that time you spend decompressing will help you steady your brain, reduce those cortisol levels, and think about where the burnout comes from. After you decompress, you can then start to look forward. This is a great time to work on preventing future burnouts by thinking about what you want from Smash. What are your goals in Smash? How do you want Smash to fit into your life? How much room do you have in your life? Another reason we burn out is because we don't properly align different parts of our lives. It's really easy to see a Twitter combo and think, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna practice that until I get it. But it's a lot harder and more important to think about how much time that's gonna take. And if landing that Twitter combo is worth that time to you, Smash is great, but it's not everything. Another key way to prevent burnout is to manage your pace. Think of your pace as how quickly you do something. It could be tangible, like running pace, or abstract, like learning pace. We've all got different paces we can work at, just like with running. We could jog, run, or sprint. Physically, it's super obvious why you jog instead of sprint. I mean, come on, if you sprinted all the time, you'd run out of energy and then you just have to keep stopping, you'll never get anywhere. In a 100 meter dash, you want to sprint. But in a marathon, sprinting won't even get you to the finish line. Pace works the same all across our lives. There are gonna be times where you should sprint and times where you should jog. You might need to sprint to prep for a big tournament, an exam, or an important deadline. But if you apply that same pace to your everyday life, your mind will burn out like your lungs would run out of breath. So take a step back and look at your pace. Did you just finish sprinting over a bunch of finish lines? Then scale back and jog for a while. Does your current pace leave you with a lot of energy? Then try speeding up a bit. In practical terms, that means looking at your workload and thinking about if you can maintain it. Are you gonna be able to keep it up for a year? Two years? Five years? If you're not sure what you can handle, Smash 4 Legend Zero recommends doing a limit testing. Zero suggests pushing yourself by filling up your schedule. Train every day, go to all the locals you can, watch VODs, do as much as possible, then try to pinpoint when it becomes too much. Ideally, that helps you set a good pace for yourself. Zero's method is interesting, but you should be careful not to do it while you're already burnt out. If you're stressed and overwhelmed, you won't be able to accurately see your limits in the first place. There is one more piece of the puzzle that helps you recover from and prevent burnout, and that's your lifestyle. Burnout really messes with your lifestyle. It's not because of the physical or mental problems it creates, though they don't help. It's because jacking up our lifestyle is part of how we burn out in the first place. Think about it this way. You had a full day of work and social obligations. You want to practice Smash, but you'd need another hour in the day. How do you get that hour? Well, you could sleep less, or you could get fast food, or you could cut out stretching or exercises like you normally do. Before you know it, all those extra tasks screwed up your routine. A worse diet and less sleep means you're heading into the next day feeling worse and moving slower. Moving slower means you're gonna have less time for the extra stuff you wanna do. Having less time for what you wanna do means creating time by cutting parts of your routine. Eventually, you're in a vicious cycle where sleep is a distant memory and every meal is a disaster and you can't even remember that kid's name that you've been talking to for a month now. A big part of avoiding burnout is managing time so that you don't cut your body off from what it needs. That means prioritizing good sleep, good meals, and good hydration. Believe it or not, a consistent sleep schedule matters more than an extra hour of practice. Lots of pros in the fighting game world have other jobs and obligations. Rather than throw off their whole lives to learn combos, they fit the time for practice in where they can. Even pros with big sponsors will do this. Nemo is a Street Fighter V veteran who plays for Team Liquid and works a full-time job at Square Enix. Even though he has to spend a ton of time working, he doesn't cut time out of his sleep schedule. He just spends some time at the arcade during nights and some time reviewing footage in the morning. 
Practice makes perfect, but perfectionism makes burnout. Don't throw out your lifestyle chasing skill. A good lifestyle is the basis for all your skills. Don't be afraid to create some rules to protect your lifestyle too. These can be pretty simple, like no playing Smash after 8 p.m., one local a week, or two, you know, one, one every other week or so. If you're a really serious competitor who goes to a lot of tournaments, you can even set an off season for yourself. Now that we've covered some ways to beat burnout, remember that you can use every one of them for any kind of burnout. Those simple lifestyle rules can apply to work too. No smash past 8 could easily be no checking emails past 8. Pace can apply to artistic projects. It's okay to sprint for a contest or deadline as long as you remember to slow back down afterwards. Rest and time off can help you create needed space in tense relationships. And if things get too heavy or enter into the territory of depression, don't be afraid to reach out. You can mend burnout with time, space, and lifestyle changes. Deeper mental issues don't work the same way. So take care of yourself and don't quit. The Smash community is better with you in it. Now finally, if you're looking for a great way to keep on your Smash game too that you can easily do throughout the day, you can also subscribe to us here on YouTube. Sure, as much as we would all love to play Smash 24-7, sometimes putting the controller down can be a good break for your hands and for your focus. And if you still want to dedicate time to improving, watching videos like this one right here is a great way to do it.